Hello, it's Dorian, and today I'm going to cover logical volume management or LVMs. I'm going to cover what it is, how to use it, the basics, and why you should use it. So let's get started. Now, I'm sure many of you have run into the dreaded low disk space notification, and then you have to, you know, start going through your downloads, delete all your large files, delete your games or whatnot. And then you have to think about expanding. So are you going to add another hard drive and mount your home partition to it or um, start moving files over to there? Or are you going to buy a larger drive, copy all your partitions over, then extend the partitions? Lots of choices, lots of decisions to make there. But one of the things you could do is install your Linux distribution on an LVM partition. Now, when you first read about LVM, it kind of sounds like a RAID array where you have multiple disks and the data is spanned across that. In a way, yeah, okay, it can be, but it doesn't provide any redundancy or anything, but it does extend your partitions across multiple disks similar to RAID. And what you can do is just keep adding disks to continue to expand that partition on the fly. So in the description down below, I've got a link to a LVM cheat sheet, and it basically goes through what I'm going to go through today, step by step with the commands. And you can follow along with that if you want, watch the video at the same time, whatever. And I have it in three different formats, so you can print it up and use it as a hard copy. But to get started, what is LVM? Well, what it does is it'll take a group of physical disks and create a volume group. And then from within that volume group, you create logical volumes. So you can have your swap partition, your root partition, and a home partition. Then once you start running out of room, it's just a matter of adding another disk, and then you can expand your volume group. And then within the volume group, you can expand your logical volumes. So I'm gonna go through that right now and show you. What I have here is a basic install of Ubuntu. I didn't do anything other than add a couple of favorites and install Gparted. So you can see here, this is the main hard drive. It has an EFI system partition and the LVM partition. Now I set this when I installed it. It was the regular install, just like any other install, except you would click on the advanced button. And then there's an option here to make it an LVM partition. You can also encrypt it with a password. That's up to you if you want to do that or not. I don't do that because it complicates things. And if you're trying to fix something and it can't access it, it just causes another layer of issues. But you can turn that on if you want to. That's completely up to you. And then you just go ahead and proceed with the install like you normally would. If you're trying to convert an existing system into LVM, there is a way to do it, but it involves creating a LVM and copying your existing files over to it and then changing some configurations to make it boot properly and then deleting the old one. It's not ideal. It can get messy and confusing and sometimes it just won't work depending on how your system is set up. So I would say just start fresh, clean install with LVM from the beginning. So this is a fresh install. I mean, there's a lot of free space and there isn't even a lot of stuff installed here, but let's just say I'm starting to run out of room on my LVM partition. It's full of games, movies, music, and what have you. So what I'm gonna do is add another hard drive into my computer, which I have done. So if I go down here, I have SDB. So I have a 223 gig SSD in here and I added another 120 gig it shows up as 111, but this is what I added into my system and it doesn't matter what's on it because you're going to wipe it and everything anyways. So I just have two ext4 partitions in here. So the first thing you're going to want to do is wipe everything out that's on it. You could do it with F disk, but if you're already running a Linux distribution, you might as well just use Gparted or some type of graphical application like this. So basically I'm just going to delete both of these and I'm going to create a new partition, take up all the space and it's going to be an LVM two PV as it shows up in Gparted. It might just say Linux LVM and whatever um, program you're using, but the important thing is you're creating the LVM file system. So add that, apply, get that done. And then we can finally get started and start extending our space. So next thing you're gonna do is open up a terminal window 
And I know a lot of people are going, oh, no, not the terminal, but it's not it's not that hard. And uh, you, you can use that cheat sheet that I have and it's not a big deal. I'll walk you through everything here. So some of the commands you're going to use here are PVs. And before I get started, anything that you use here is going to be sudo. So you can do sudo su to become root. So you don't have to keep typing it, but you do have to be root to be able to do it. So now this is listing our physical volumes. This is whatever disks that you have in your system that have an LVM partition. So you can see SDA2 is the partition that we're actually using for Ubuntu. And you can see here it's mounted as VG Ubuntu, which is here. Another command to show what's currently going on is you could do VGs and it's going to show you the VG Ubuntu volume group and it is using one physical volume with one disk and it contains two logical volumes. So let's go ahead and look at LVs, logical volumes. So the logical volumes, the two that are listed up here are root and swap. So I have the root partition, which is 222 gigs. And I have a swap partition, which for some reason, Ubuntu only made one gig, and I'm going to expand that. There's actually a difference in expanding a swap partition than a regular partition. So I'm going to go through those steps as well. So now if you've used FDisk or another utility, and it is not showing up here, then the command you're going to want to use is PV create. So physical volume create. And you're basically just going to tell it which physical volume you want added. Now this isn't going to do anything because it was already successfully created. So if I do sudo pvs, you can see it's there. It was there before. It's not assigned to any volume group, but if it didn't show up the first time, it should now show up. Okay, so at this point we have two physical volumes and we want to extend our volume group across both disks. So now what you're going to do here is sudo vg extend vg ubuntu because that is the volume group we want to extend and then dev sdb1 because we want vg ubuntu to extend onto sdb1. So we'll do that and successfully extend it. So we can go ahead and do PVs. And now we can see that the volume group is on both physical hard drives. So now at this point, we haven't changed anything with the root and swap partitions. They are the same size. They are both still on SDA2, the original hard drive. What we have to do now is extend those into the new space that is available on the second hard drive. Now, as I mentioned before, I only had the one gig of swap partition, which to me is is fine. I actually don't use any, but if you wanted to resize a swap partition, this is how you're going to do it. First thing you're going to do is turn the swap off. So the command is swap off dash a, which will turn off the swap, all swap partitions, because you could have more than one. And now we can resize that swap partition. So let's have a look at the logical volumes, the LVs, and you can see that swap one is one gig. We need to extend that logical volume now that we have additional space on the second drive. So now we're going to resize the logical volume of the swap partition. But one thing that you're going to need to know is the path of where that volume is physically on the drive. So I'll explain this here by running LV display. So logical volume display shows you a lot of information about the logical volumes in your volume group. Now you can see here the swap partition is here. So slash dev slash VG Ubuntu. So VG Ubuntu is acting as a hard drive. Normally you'd have dev slash dev slash SDA one and whatnot. Well, this is VG Ubuntu because it's a volume group and then swap one within that volume group. If you found that confusing, don't worry about it. The biggest thing you need to know is you need to know this path in order to resize the partition. So now we're going to do LV resize and the path of what you want to extend. And you're going to do dash capital L. And then you're going to use disk space here, like gigabytes, megabytes. So I want an additional seven gigabytes. So I do plus seven G. You could do 
M if you want an extra seven megabytes for some reason, but I'm using gigabytes. So I want an extra seven gigabytes added to the current size of that swap partition. So I'm going to do that and the logical volume of swap one successfully resized. So you can see it went from 976 megs to 7.95 gigs, close enough to eight gigs. Now, because it's a swap partition, you need to do make swap and you're going to put that same path again. It's gonna format it. No, it's not gonna format it because you also need to be sudo. All right, so that's done. And now we can do swap on again, dash A. And if we look at our system monitor, our swap is now showing as eight gigs. So perfect. Now that's swap partitions. That is not ext4 root partitions. That's just something I wanted to cover because it's a different way to do it because you have to unmount, recreate the swap file system and remount. Resizing the root partition is actually a little bit easier. So again, let's just uh, do LV display. And this is the one we want to resize. So I'm just going to copy that. And now here we're going to sudo LV resize just like before. And just like before, I could do dash L and 100 gigs and then the path. Now you'll notice before I put the options here after. It doesn't really matter if you put it before or after, it will understand. So I just want to show you that it doesn't matter how you do it. And this should actually be a plus 100 gigs, but I'm not going to do this. What I want to do is take up all the available remaining space on that drive because I took seven gigs of the new drive for the swap partition. So now the rest of the space, I want to take it all up. So I'm going to change this to lowercase l, and then I'm going to go plus 100 percent free. This means I want to take 100% of the remaining free space on the new drive, the, the new volume group, which is now extended onto the new drive, which gave us extra free space. So now I want to resize this root partition to take up all of it. You can see what is available here also by doing a sudo PVs, and you can see here, there's 104 gigs free on the volume group because we've taken seven away for the swap partition. So this command down here in the other window is going to add 104 gigs to our total free space. So you can see here, the size of root 218 gigs, 202 gigs free. So we're gonna go ahead and run our resize command. And you can see root has changed from 222 gigs to 326 gigs. There's one thing that I forgot because I'm not reading my own notes on my cheat sheet is you have to resize the file system within the logical volume as well. So there's a dash R that has to go in there as well. So just run that and it will also resize the file system within the logical volume. So now if we go ahead and run this again, we can see here that root used to be 218 gigs with 202 free, and it is now 321 gigs with 301 gigs free. So now we have extended our partition for root and swap across two physical drives. So now going back to gparted here, when this drive fills up and it's out of space, the data is just gonna start spilling over into SDB1, the new hard drive that you just added. You can see here, the mount point for the LVM partition is VG Ubuntu. And if you look on SDB, the mount point is also VG Ubuntu. And then after this, if you fill this disk up, you do the same thing and you just add another drive and extend onto that one as well. However, if that happens on the second drive you've added, I would strongly consider getting a much larger hard drive if you're going to add a third one so that it doesn't happen again. So this is very handy for if you're running a server and you're just collecting data. If you have a lot of pictures and you have a computer that you just use for working on pictures or videos and you just keep you know, collecting large files over and over and you just run out of space, well, throw in another hard drive and 
run out of space, throw in another hard drive. Now, the big downside to this is shrinking, going, going the opposite. If you want to remove one of your physical disks, it's a little more complicated and I'm not going to go through it because I have tried it and three out of four times the system wouldn't boot because you can shrink your volumes and you can move the data off the physical disks, but there's still a really good chance that you're going to lose data and something's going to go wrong. And three out of four times something went wrong and the system wouldn't boot. So I just kept trying and trying and trying. Actually, I did try it another time. So three out of five times it failed Two succeeded, but it took some messing around with. And I don't know, it's not it's not something you want to do. This is better for just expanding and expanding. So all this in a nutshell, well, a long nutshell, but uh, I tried to keep it short and simple. All this is how you would continue expanding your drives with LVM. Key points are start with an LVM to begin with right off the bat, get a larger hard drive than you think you would need if you're adding one. And remember that shrinking is not a good option and terrible things can happen. And yeah, I hope this helps you out. So don't forget to subscribe. Don't forget to like the video, share it on your social media. And until next time, bash on. <music>